I didn't really realize at the time how significant it is, but you know, I do now. I think now looking back, I can see it was even more risky than I was even realized then. So, but nonetheless, I'm still glad to be the first, not only for my benefit, but for, you know, future patients. Yeah, somebody's got to do it, that old saying. One day I was standing there working and I got a, it must have been like a seizure or something. I just started kind of babbling. I couldn't even control what I was saying. And I felt like someone had me on a rope and was pulling me across the room because I just walked off at an angle. I had no control of anything. And then it just seemed to go away and I was fine. And then I started getting more serious problems where I couldn't even answer a question and I'd just say, I don't know what to say. And I couldn't figure out what to do. Shortly after that, I decided, you know, I better go see my doctor. But then, you know, my doctor could tell just in my speech and trying to talk to him that there was something neurologic going on, something physical. So he sent me for an MRI and they found this huge tumor. So next thing I know, I'm down at uh, Barrow in emergency and getting another MRI and then they scheduled me for uh, surgery. Yeah, that was quite a pretty extensive deal. Barrow, as an institution, has long been known for innovation. You know, that is part of the reason why we were willing to host this and to be also the first to take the step. Bill had some neurologic symptoms back in 2014 and was diagnosed with a large brain tumor. Bill's adventure in neurosurgery is not the typical one. Uh, as opposed to most people where we have a tumor like this, we take it out and they do great and it's all done. He had an atypical tumor, meaning a more aggressive form. So he's already had about as much surgery as anybody would ever want to have. And despite of that, uh, his tumor recurred. So I was asked to provide post-surgical treatment options that would allow us to treat Bill without compromising uh, his ability to heal. It's hard to enjoy every day, you know, when look at the past four years, there's some reality in that sneaks in that makes it tough, but you still keep going. Certainly that first tumor was a major thing because, you know, we were all, you know, getting up to speed on what meningioma tumors are and how you treat them and everything. But it all kind of just really came to a head when that second recurrence came back. And that's when I began to realize, wow, you know, even though it's treatable, it's not going to be pleasant. And then, then, of course, he went through, you know, even more after that. They took his skull cap off seven times. You know, whether it was to remove tumors or because of infections. And there's always those worries about infection, you know, and the worry that he has and must have when he has a surgery, you know, am I going to have to do this again? He'll have one of these surgeries and then you know, they'll send him home and say, well, you know, lay low for a while. And, and, you know, to him, that means going into the shop and working. I think that's what, you know, really keeps me going to focus on, you know, work. And I think that's been the greatest therapy. I've always been called a workaholic, but I think it has its benefits sometimes.
ZAPX is a specialized robot dedicated to delivering precision radiation to head and neck tumors. My vision is simple. There are one to two million patients a year who don't have access to state-of-the-art treatment, state-of-the-art brain surgery. There's no reason the ZAPX can't fill that need and literally save millions of lives. Medical progress has always been based on people, on patients, who've been willing to go first, and who've been willing to teach us what works, what doesn't work. And there is risk to being that very, very first patient. I mean, the risk is always death. I mean, we have spent, me personally, 10 years trying to make this technology. And we've tried to be systematic and thorough and think of every conceivable thing that can go wrong so we can make this safe. Because you worry something like this, he's the first patient. Will this do him any harm? We've been friends for a long time that this could potentially be close to the end of our, our friendship with him if he doesn't survive this. Of course I'm nervous. Um, yeah, tomorrow is a big day. Tomorrow is a very big day. We're testing every part of the system over and over and over. I can't see anything uh, better we can do at this point. To be able to walk in there and potentially walk out in two hours and not have the skin cut open is, uh, it just doesn't even make sense, but it's amazing. We will look forward to it and cross our fingers it's a, <laughs> another good outcome. I guess you look at it as an adventure in a way, but I don't know. I look forward to the couple of days and see where this goes. Next, next phase, next chapter. So, yep. In a sense, Bill Richardson is a bit of a Neil Armstrong, right? He has taken the decision to, to get treated, which he needed, but also to be the first one to put his foot on the moon, so to speak. There are many other people who wouldn't be the first, but would be the second. Strong man, you know, silent but strong. I admire him. Dude, what a badass. I mean, it, his willingness to do this is awesome. Because, I mean, that's like, that's real R&D stuff. It's, it, it really goes back to this type of stuff. It's like, okay, like what Bill's dad always used to say, it's cut and try. So I think it's the same thing with this in your life, you know, just don't give up. Having this human experience, there's dark and light and I mean you can live in one extreme or the other but that's not reality reality is both and there's gonna be hard times and there's gonna be good times like in every single hard time or dark period there's always a light you just have to look really really hard for it some days but there's always a light or there's good and the more you focus on that the more that it'll open up as physicians we will never know what our patients go through we can only experience what they have experienced through their eyes and through their outcomes. And that is what Bill has done. He's taught us all what it is when we treat someone with a Zapex. And in time we pray that it will be a wonderful outcome. And in time we pray that literally hundreds and thousands, maybe millions will be treated with this technology. 
And it all starts with that first step, the first step of treating Bill.